<laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Trash Tuesday with special guest Rick Glassman. I am Rick Glassman here with Esther Pavitsky, who doesn't have a side, and Kalila, who is left-sided, correct? And this is my good side. Now... Okay, go ahead, Rick. What is it about the other side that scares you so much? Because we switched. We had to start. Oh, you had to let minutes. everybody know that we had to switch. Oh, we could edit that out. It's just, but you actually were so avoidant. You did not want to switch. I said, I think Kalila likes that side, and you didn't want to let her have that, even though. No, no, what I said was, let's have her say that on the podcast. Why? So Because I want to have that conversation. What's the good side? I believe it. I believe it exists, Must but I never nice see it. Must be nice to live with symmetry, you Asshole. Ask Esther. She's not symmetrical, but both sides are bad. Esther? <laughs> Look, Rick. Yes. My right side. Hold I mean, on, you I just said it. it. People can be objectively ugly, right? And it's all about symmetry. And my, I am the most asymmetric person. I have one eye smaller than the I other. I have that too. We know. It's not Let as obvious as yours, I think. And um, just my everything is a little bit stranger on the right side. I don't think that beauty is objective. I'm saying there are some things that aren't as subjective. But like, there are some people that you take a you take a, a sample of a hundred guys and a hundred girls, and then you take a sample of two hundred random people, and they say pretty or not pretty. There's going to be some that but, more. Yeah, people, but that's based on. Ooh, sorry, are you going to be here the whole podcast? It's very shrill. Can we do something about Esther? 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 Can we turn the shrill down? Daddy's Maybe bring her parents so something could be funny. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh my God, Julie, how exciting. You guys, Julie is an FDA approved morning after pill that helps stop pregnancy before it starts. Go to juliecare.co to learn more or find Julie at your nearest CVS, Target or Walmart today. That's juliecare.co to learn more. Our next partner is Athletic Greens and we take AG1 a lot over here. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health. I wanted to get my greens in without having to think about it and do guessing games and play with bunches of pills. And if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash Tuesday. That's athleticgreens.com slash Tuesday. Check it out. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Trash Tuesday today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Trash Tuesday. You guys, stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way. Go to RocketMoney.com slash Trash Tuesday. That's RocketMoney.com slash Trash Tuesday. <laughs> he made the same joke last night. Esther was doing 20 minutes, and she goes, I'm not going to do the whole 20. And he said... Well, I of course, not without her parents here. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun seeing you last night doing that show. I got to say, I haven't seen you in a while, and it works. <laughs> it, it, when you walk up with the music and the little dancing that we did and everything, it oh, works. Yeah, I'm we so have, funny. Wait, did you bring her up? <laughs> no. We just were in the back of Soho House and we were in a big group of crowded cool people and I saw Rick across the room for the first time in a I'll long do my impression time. of Esther when she saw me. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked up to him. He popped up like and I when I'm near Rick my body just sort of goes with it and Also mind please let him know popped up on beat. On oh yes. On beat. It was on the fourth. Why don't you say what happened? Please, please. And then he swirled me around and dipped me, and all the cool, hot people were impressed. And they all went like this. Do you want to change shirts? <laughs> I love this shirt. It's okay. vintage diesel. Pretend you're going down a roller coaster and let everybody see what I just saw. <laughs> <laughs> That's Rick. body shaming. My arms? No, your armpits are wet. Oh, oh so you just are mine. <laughs> They are your, are your armpits never sweat, Rick? Wait. They sweat, yeah, but we just started. That never Mine happens. are constantly sweating, dripping sweat. If you say treadmill, she starts to perspire. <laughs> I, I just need to think one thought and my armpits are wet, if, if it, even if it's a mm. positive thought. It's called hyperhidrosis. Oh, I'm sorry. I relate. Thank you, mother. Um, now listen, Rick, so people are ugly is what you're saying. Obje I'm saying I'm saying I don't think beauty is as and I say the same I think the th same thing is also about <laughs> comedy. I don't think that comedy and beauty are as subjective but as people f 
So say. you're saying since the dawn of time, um, there's been a beauty standard. Someone no. can be born and just know inherently what is good looking, what is not good looking. Because no. wouldn't you argue that... I already said no, so your point is go ahead. But so tell us, if 200 people are in a room mm -hmm. and we do a, a, a survey of who's good looking and who's right. not good looking... Um, no, it's very it's it's based on the time and culturally as well. Like if you go like we're here in America in twenty, what is it? Twenty three. Twenty three. Twenty twenty three. There is what a flex! Wow, you're so cool. You don't even know the year. <laughs> Whatever. That, I don't think about that kind of stuff. Cool guy. <laughs> cool guys here. Yeah. And what day is it, by the way? <laughs> oh God. Um, yeah, I just think that some people, like for example. Um, I, I bet you, like a lot of people will comment I've seen on, on this podcast and when you guess on mine, Esther's actually not that ugly <laughs> because they got to know her, really, they got to know her a little bit and, and she's funny when funny people are around. So like things change and the, the meter moves a little bit, but but typically like nobody's going to ask Esther to, to campaign for something if it weren't for her funny parents. Does that make sense? <laughs> she's not going to be Maybelline. No one would say we maybe it's that. Maybelline. They know it's Maybelline. We don't know that. Well, we'll see. Look. You're trying to say, oh. <laughs> you're trying to say that beauty, you just said before we started rolling that beauty is. There are some people. I forgot. That, yeah, well, <laughs> there are some people, um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. We're not these people uh -huh. that are like, they're like, whoa. No, you're very ugly too. That's why we see each other in each other. I, I don't see that any of me and you, you literally or metaphorically. No, 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 but you do. No, you're you're an ugly person. I'm an average guy. <laughs> I when I look in the mirror, I see Rick Glassman. Uh, we know. <laughs> Cut to a clip. Of me just behind you. <laughs> Wait no. a second. I'm not understanding your point because you're kind of arguing your own point in front of me. So you're saying? Yeah, I know. He's totally switchy swatchy. So there is. There is a beauty standard, but again, that beauty standard varies in yes. time and place. Yes. Okay, but, but, when that, somebody but, but either of those beauty standards are still based on previous references of beauty and what the culture social, decides. One of the right? variables is very, very influenced by social standards and what is being marketed and what people are doing and what trends, absolutely. But if you look at any period of time, for example, there are people who are not, uh, uh, what's his name, Adam Driver, I think is such a good looking guy, but he's like got an interesting, non-symmetrical, he's got big character. And he you has hips. You think and I'm not a hips you girl. Think, you think you're Adam Driver, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait a second. <laughs> yeah. You know, Adam Driver's good looking. Just because his nose is big and he's very Jewish looking and his posture isn't the best. Talking about me now. Because I think, like, I grew up around um, people. Well, I grew up in a culture that revered sumo wrestlers, say, for instance. Right. I grew up in Asia. And these guys were, were playboys. They would date, like, really hot models. And yeah. they were, what, like, 400, 500 pound dudes. Mm -hmm. And I've always had a thing for fat Asian dudes. We know. <laughs> and so, we you know. know. Um, <laughs> Everyone at home goes, we know. <laughs> but like objectively, and this is, I mean, not objectively, subjectively, I, this is going to sound pretty harsh, but I basically don't look at white guys twice. Mm -hmm. Like it's very hard for me to find a white person, like a white guy, like, just to get my loins going in that direction. Okay. But if Wait. you put a you know a portly Asian guy in front of me, my loins will get going. But then over here in America, they it, it kind of took a while for Asian men to be viewed that way. And it's still not, you know, the, the, the sumo wrestler look is still not a thing here. Mm. That's such a superpower to not be attracted to white men. I know. <laughs> like you can just like destroy their lives How? and not care. What does I mean, that I've mean? dated them. It's just it, it my, you know, my preferences are a little bit shaped they're shaped differently because I grew up in a different continent. Yeah, I mean So Asian guys are number 1 for me. Don't you feel like what she just said completely blew your argument out of the water? Absolutely. I I stand corrected. <laughs> that's it? <laughs> it was that no, easy? No, that's what I'm saying. It's not it's not it's not objective. I'm saying it's just not completely subjective. For example, people like pizza. 
A lot of people say pizza's delicious. Some people don't like pizza. Some people don't like white pizzas. <laughs> However, I love white pizza though. Okay. I hate white pizza. If it, if it's bread, you'll eat it. <laughs> People like pizza. So what I'm saying is there is a deviation to that. But like if you were like no. salmon pot pie, I'm sure people will eat that. But that's not classically beautiful. No, it is. If that's what you grew up thinking was classically I'm, beautiful, then you will eat that. Yes. Some people like salmon pot pie. Yeah. Most people like pizza. Bobby because loves that's pot what pie. most of the people that you know were exposed but to. But that's, that's what I'm saying. You are one of the most of the people I know. So are <laughs> the people that I'm going to meet. I'm not here saying beauty needs to be a certain thing. I'm just not following this idea that everything is so subjective. Food, comedy, looks. It, there are kind of like standards of Soft like no there's rails, not but saying. there are no there's not Rick, there's I literally can go beauty standards that I think is ruining that were feminine invented. company that, absolutely yes I could literally start my own planet and say I'm the standard of beauty and yours will go by and that I, will that will never play why not start your own planet you <laughs> you almost pooped your pants because he was a little bit late getting here <laughs> I just think that some people do you ever look at a girl or a guy and be like, she's hot, he's hot, and think that most people would agree? No. Okay, I'm wrong. I, I see what you're saying. There are people that I could be like, oh, he's objectively good looking, but I'm not attracted but maybe to them. But that is based on what you saw Everything growing is. up Everything is. So is your flavor profile on your, your, your palate. Exactly. We're all a reflection of the culture around us. Deep, man. Deep. So that means that it could, if it were any different, it, it, it would be different and we wouldn't know. Agreed. Okay, so. But here we are, growing up the way we grew up, yeah. looking at the things, eating the things, watching the things. We have this idea of what we are into at this moment in time. And with that, it's not as fluid as everyone saying everything. All people are beautiful. But it's all made up. So are the words we're using, but you still understand them. Yeah. <laughs> So we make stuff up. We have pattern recognition as these humans and we have this shorthand and we communicate the way we do physically, emotionally, f words, music. And we have an idea of what the world is and what we like. And as a collective, people, there are people that are relatively uglier <laughs> than other people. Do you disagree? Um under this, under what society has decided upon, yes, yes, but then if you're going to follow that, it's like, so are we sticking with that? Because under that societal sticking ruling, what? like what our culture has told us, it's like only tall, blonde women who look like Pam Anderson are, that's the standard of beauty. Funny. grew up in the 90s. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But that's my point. It's Same. like. But yes, for a while, big tits were, correct me if I'm wrong, all the rage. And now, we don't need them anymore. But the only reason they were that was because Pam Anderson. Yes. So she, it can change. Absolutely. So if it can change, it can be anything at any point. We, and don't, we don't need big tits anymore? Nope. All you need is a nice ass and a good face and oh, money. But then it got replaced with the ass. But what happens to the, you know what I mean? It just. It's a bummer. It's a bummer. For we guys, don't know it used what's to be. coming next. Yeah. We don't, and that's. And that's that's what's exciting. That's what's exciting. And that's kind of like what the, the, the younger generations have to offer, like kind of like the elected officials, what we're voting for, who's, who's going to create these new policies, who's going to represent us. That's why it's important that we have people kind of go in there and be like, oh, yeah, like this is good looking and this is funny and this is tasty. And things change. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Mm, very good. But do you guys think Dumb and Dumber is a funny movie? I don't remember. Yeah. Of course. What do you mean, of course? Well, there's nostalgia tied to it for me because my dad and I watched it. Mm. And the, the 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 movie theater in the Philippines was so packed that people were like sitting on the aisles, like not wow. even on actual Even in the seats. Philippines, Dumb and Dumber was funny. Hilarious, yes. Would you say you understand that some people might not think it's funny, but ob objectively, like, m that's a funny movie. Ye yeah, but I, I feel like, again... I don't know if this speaks to your point or our point, but um, it's not as funny to me today. If sure. I were to watch it today with fresh eyes, it would be a little bit different. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you trying to argue that Dumb and Dumber is objectively funny? What I'm saying is in the same, in the same way That's that- That's the movie you chose? Yeah, it's not the funniest movie in the world, but it's a very funny, big, broad movie. Okay. And it's just like- 
You don't think there's a ton of smart people right now it, that will look at that? And I, I don't remember anything about the movie, but my top of my intelligence guess is that everyone, even in this room right now, would look at that movie today and be like, this is stupid and not funny. And it won't make me laugh out loud. Okay, then you're pretty. <laughs> you're a beautiful girl. Thank you. Do you think Dumb Fine. and Dumber is a good movie? Yeah. Well, what do you think about Pam Anderson now versus Pam Anderson back then? Oh. I used to. I used to be. I was so into Pam Anderson and Carmen Electra, and I didn't have a printer growing up. I know. I didn't have a computer, Rick. I didn't have a computer until I was 24 years old. Honestly, I don't know why I'm undressing. But that might be for the best. I had a computer when I was 10, and I did not use it for good. What did you use it for? Cyber sex, AOL <laughs> chat rooms, pretending. To At 10? Yes. Pretending to be what? Pretending to be a woman that looks like Pam Anderson. Did you Why? did you catfish people then? Yeah. And what would you say? I did chat room stuff. I bet. Do you think maybe we? I feel like I recognize <laughs> you. <laughs> what kind of dirty things did you say? I just would. Were you trying to get MP3s? No, I would download pictures of naked women. Mm -hmm. You had my attention. And send them to people. Oh, and this I is met me? in chat rooms. Right. And say that was me. Now, the women that you downloaded, were they just, were they pretty women or ugly women or nope they're the, oh, they're, no they were tell. like what the standard of beauty was at the time that's all i'm saying man oh god that's that all i'm saying I, you thought that these people would be attracted to this type of woman because of what i saw on tv and what all, was told everything we're doing we're all stardust man Everything we're exactly. doing is based on our uh, what we're inspired and our experiences. So what is to stop me from starting a whole new cult and being like, I'm the hottest thing? You've been trying to do it for a decade. How's it working for you, sweetheart? <laughs> I think we should... So you've catfished people. Oh, I mean, granted, yeah. you were I've really young. I've done it young. too, and I did it, and I said I was a girl. You said oh. you were a girl? Yeah. Why? Are we not going to talk about the Pamela Anderson Carmen Electra printer stuff? Do we go back to that? We can. Okay, let's start there. But let's I mean, definitely to, not gloss over to. the girl stuff. What could that be? Um, I uh, I don't know how old I was. It probably like 10-ish. And chat rooms are new. And Rick, I think you and I hooked up in a chat room. I think 90s. you guys must have. I think that's yeah, why then it was girl on girl. <laughs> <laughs> and that would, that would make sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would uh I would talk and and uh I would pretend I was a girl. Wait, I thought we we were going through Carmen Electra printer. Oh, sure. Yeah, First. you you seem so desperate to go back to it. No, so I just take I thought, us there. It was just it's a funny it's a funny memory that Go I, for it. Um I would go bored. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Write that down. What what time are we? <laughs> Esther got a laugh. How far are we? 1650. <laughs> Good. Which is probably the last time Esther would have been hot. So. Uh, I was so ugly when I was 16. No, I'm, saying, I'm saying back in 1650. Oh. I'm saying. In the year 1650. When like this would what it would be. You look like. You look. Honestly. You, you look like. Like a Renaissance paint. Like I saw a picture of what George Washington. I don't know if we could find it. So we could put it up now. Would look like if you were president today, and you look just like that. So I had a thing for Carmen Electra and Jenny McCarthy and Pamela Anderson. Of course, same, same. Yes. same. Oh, interesting. All we all agree. That's yeah. what we were. They were fed. the Dumb and Dumber of tits back then. <laughs> so uh, I uh, and back then, you know, you. You, 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 it wasn't as easy to look at pictures and videos and stuff. Because, you had to download them and like wait for it to uh -huh. yeah. like fill in. Yeah, almost screen. like you were like looking them up and down, but you had to go really slow. Yeah. I found them on hard copy. What? Yeah, like on magazines and stuff. Oh. We didn't like, live in the Philippines. I was here already. Oh. How, where did you find those magazines? I mean, like you would just basically anywhere like your friends homes you would tear them you would s steal them wherever you could find them steal them yeah i was a thief <laughs> i was if, and, if and you were a catfish you i was were, a thief were pictures of pamela anderson anything i could get my little sticky hands on rick mm -hmm. there was a lot of theft in my younger years yeah but okay printer why i'm feeling a disconnect you're like mm. Like these things, the, these acknowledgments that we're not on the same page. I really think it'll, I really think it'll help the podcast. You know what has bothered me in the past is the morning after pill experience 
it's a little too clinical, it's a little too boring, it's a little too shameful, which is why I'm really glad that a brand like Julie exists now because it's fun. It's taking the shame away from, you know, a situation that it sometimes is unavoidable. And Julie is an FDA-approved morning-after pill that helps stop pregnancy before it starts. Julie stops your body from releasing an egg using the same active ingredient as Plan B or other morning-after pills. Essentially, Julie works by preventing or delaying your ovulation. With no egg, there's no fertilization and therefore no pregnancy, and it's no risk to future fertility. If you've ever had unprotected sex, forgot your birth control, had a condom break, or you're just not sure, we are so excited to talk about this new company that is giving emergency contraception a much needed rebrand. Julie is an FDA approved morning ap after pill that helps stop pregnancy before it starts. And honestly, at a time like we're living in right now, which is crazy, the morning after pill is more important than ever to just have it on hand because I'm sorry, but I don't want a pregnancy that I don't want. Right. And it's legal in all 50 states. You do not need an ID prescription or credit card to get it. And Julie is not just a morning after pill. It's a morning after pill brand that's working to increase access to emergency contraception for women across the country. Julie has a one for one donation program. And every time you purchase Julie at a store or online, the company donates one pill to someone who needs it. And Julie partners with over 25 organizations across the country to provide donations to those disproportionate disproportionately impacted by health inequities. Mm. You can go to juliecare.co to learn more or find Julie at your nearest CVS, Target, or Walmart today. That's juliecare.co to learn more. So, Kalila, you're the one that actually taught me about Athletic Greens, and you take it every day, and you mix it in water, and it helps with gut health. It helps. I know for me, I'm not a person that can deal with uh, calculating what vitamins and minerals I need, like the fact that Athletic Greens does it all in one place in one fell swoop is kind of the only way I'm ever going to be healthy. Yeah, and it's it's easy. It's how I start my mornings. I get um, eight ounces of water, I uh, one scoop of Athletic Greens. I take my little matcha stirrer, stir it in. Sometimes I add a little bit of ACV. Sometimes I don't. Either way, it tastes delicious. And it sort of just eliminates the guessing game for me for the rest of the day. Well, it's hard for me to keep up with a supplement routine that comes with a bunch of different products. Also, just even knowing where to start with supplements is even worse because I feel like I'll scroll TikTok and I'll hear, oh, you need this. Oh, you need that. It's too much. It's too confusing. AG1 has all the things you need. They've done the work, the homework for you. And I'm always looking for life hacks, which is why I've come to love and trust AG1 by Athletic Greens. The all-in-one formula makes it easy for me to cover my nutritional bases every day. Every scoop is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients of the highest quality that give me major benefits like gut, and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking skin, hair, and nails. And if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash Tuesday. That's athleticgreens.com slash Tuesday. Check it out. I have TMJ. Yeah. Same. I'm, Did you, you go to my guy? No, you never gave me your guy. I thought I t told you about it a while ago. I couldn't Wrong get... Wrong Kalila. I need a guy. Right. Can uh, I have the guy? Yeah. Um, what I, does he do? Does he go inside the mouth? Uh, I would like he that. He has mouth stuff. I love mouth uh, stuff. Let me tell you something. I, I, had a bad, I had a bad jar. I went to my dentist. I had a mold made. It wasn't cheap. It was like 600 bucks. It helped a little. That's pretty cheap for dental work. It's not nothing. Wait, you had a... Was it a night guard? It was a night guard custom. It wasn't enough. So I then I ended too. up going to this guy and I... it's. He, it's magic. I've referred a few people to him. What does he do? Um, it's a one-time fee, which he'll tell you after you meet with him to base, is it one retainer, top, bottom, or both? And then that pays for five to six months worth of treatment. So he gives you the retainer, and then you go in for the first month once a week, and then you go in as needed. Usually it'll be every few weeks to every month for a bit. It's about 10 minutes of a little physical therapy. He does a little movements. Um, he gives you exercises, stretches. He keeps changing the guard, and it's... I could oh, I could just get a toothbrush in for a while, and now I'm I'm great. I think that so. What I'm hearing is your TMJ is from grinding because you need an actual guard. Same with you. Same with you. Grounding, grinding, clenching, and stress. Yeah. Which okay. Because my, my, my special. I don't. Your first special. 
It'd still be my next. <laughs> <laughs> I don't grind. What do you do? I, I don't grind. I, I just, I do this like facial flex. Clench. When I, but I don't necessarily clench either because my dentist says he doesn't see a lot of evidence. You can usually see in your teeth and your back teeth if you have a lot of grinding and clenching. Well, I have enough evidence just by the conversation we're having. Wait, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like if somebody came in and gave you like a really great, amazing jaw massage that you would get really horny? Um, probably. Okay. Then I got Any guy. type of massage. <laughs> <laughs> um... But that sounds, he sounds great. I just don't know if I would benefit would. from That's um, a mouth guard. That's what's happening. What's what's happening? You're you're, you're clenching. You're you're overworking the muscle. Also, there's a decent chance that it's it's not even, and one side is overcompensating. You might be chewing uneven. I think mine is stemming from my neck. It is. You're. It is. Because I did go to a pain doctor mm -hmm. specifically who does like TMJ stuff, and he was like, "Oh, all of your stuff is from your neck, and it moves forward." I Maybe go like this. Maybe fix. How do you feel now? Not better. <laughs> I realized that weed was helping with my jaw and my constipation. I quit weed, and now those problems are back. So, oh. so you yeah. don't. So you don't smoke weed anymore, and now you can't poop. Well, it's just it's harder again. My gastrointestinal issues. But aren't you on um, magnesium citrate? I just started. So because I quit weed, I was looking for an alternative to help with relaxing and bowel movements. And so I got those gummies, the Calm gummies, which are magnesium citrate. Mm -hmm. But you take magnesium. I take magnesium, but I take like stuff that actually absorbs into the body so i don't know about the gummies is mine wait mine's not good i, I don't know Esther, if it works Esther, for you it works Esther for you Esther only takes medicine in candy form what was the penicillin <laughs> chocolates that you were taking when you had strep <laughs> <laughs> it was a penicillin brownies <laughs> we'll be right back do you is so it's not good what i have i don't know if it works for you are you pooping a lot a or I enough say a lot. well there were a lot of flies around her while we were waiting outside <laughs> Esther, am I wrong? Those were there when I got there. Yes, they were big fans of hers. Esther actually has a really great audience of flies and rats. The fly and rat tour. That could be your next one. Would your parents go? I take a lot of magnesiums, complexes. What kind? I take a complex that has a lot of things, including citrate. But then I, when I'm feeling in the mood, and I often am, I'll take some free plug, Mag-07, magnesium oxide. And that's the, the, that, the that poop fills hero. The, that fills the intestines with water. So you just drink a lot of water with it and it helps flush out. The reason that I, those, either of those, magsite and mag oxide does not work for me is because I already have GI problems. And Bragging. so I cannot have anything that even like um, irritates it or causes frequency. So I do the glycinate one now. So that's moderate. Glycerate is a moderate magnesium. Yeah. I and you can quote like me on that. One. But I, of all the ones that have worked well on like my heart palpitations and like my um, eye little eye twitches is the glycinate. It's changed my life. What is it doing to your body? Do you know? Um, I think it's just, I don't know what it is, but I don't know how it directly. Calms the central nervous system, lets things relax. You know, our intestines are just little fibers going to work and when they're stressed. But jazz hands? But my heart issue, like my, I have like an electrical conductivity issue in my heart. And for some reason, I don't get as many palpitations. So works for me. Highly recommend. Wow. Okay. So we're all on the magnesium plug right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Rick, you're in, um, I'm asking you this because I'm on a, a, a journey, mm -hmm. um, a solo journey myself, mm -hmm. but you're not so solo anymore these mm -hmm. days. And I am, I am in a relationship at the moment, uh, for, uh. I was, we, we were talking before about like when you get out of a relationship, then how long do you stay single? Is this what we're getting toward? Yep. I typically am single for a while, while between. Don't date much between. And that's a very intentional thing you do. It's intentional, yes, but not intentional like something I'm trying. Um, the analogy I gave was like, like you try not to eat sugar. You, have, you, you want sugar, but you're like, you're not eating the sugar. So I'm, it's not like I want to be dating, but like I think it's best for me. I fortunately i believe don't have the desire to and yeah, i think but that's good are you hooking up with people i mean i, I have and i you know i'm not i'm i, I think i have a great analogy let's hear it ask me if i drink 
Why do I have to ask you? I'm so sorry. You're right. I uh, I, I'm, I shouldn't have asked you to, to to help and play along on this. Okay, podcast. you drink, sir? Rick? Do you uh, drink? Not really. No, I'm not sober. Like I'll have a drink, but usually no. Oh, I so do. women are like a drink to you? It's like having a drink. In the analogy, I'm not drawn to that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, if like I'm somewhere and I'm in the mood for a, a drink, I'm not going to be like, I can't do this. Right. But I'm not like actively seeking. I'm not actively seeking. I'm not like hooking up all the time, no, uh, nor am I looking for it. Okay. But do you leave the door open should someone yeah. really light you up in that way? Yeah, I do think that that door isn't open wide for the first while after a breakup. How long? I, I can't, I, eight months. Are you somebody that when the breakup happens, you are you are grieving the breakup in that moment or are you a distraction guy? No, no, grieving. Really? Oh, see, that's great. I'm I think looking, that's why. I, admittingly, I do look for a distraction, not with other women, but like, with weed and movies, but no, I'm grieving. I'm 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 grieving. I've noticed this in you. I think which I relate to. Tell me if I'm wrong, but like when I get dumped, you've gotten dumped. <laughs> I and similar to what you're saying, it's like I feel every feeling. Mm-hmm. I'm so sad. I like there is no escaping the feelings. Like I'm not the like I feel like I see with guys. Typically, which I'm, it's interesting to hear you're not like that. It's well, I'm like, not a guy. I'm a man. Um, they want to hook up, hook up, you know, and they don't feel it. And I'm, I always am like, God, I, I've always felt like, really? yeah, I've, y- yeah, I. That's I'd, more guys than girls. I feel like girls move on quicker. Not no. a chance. I, I would. If there was even a way to distract me from my pain, I would do it. But it's like there's no it's so type sad. of. I can't even think of like fucking someone else would make it exponentially worse for yeah, me. Which, anyway. Doing this, traveling, anything. I cannot escape from my grief in that moment. I can't think of a single thing to distract me from my grief. Like I am fully in a state of calamity. And I like it. That's a good. That's a good T-shirt. In a state of, cal- but you do Kalila instead. I'm fully in a state of Kalila. Oh well, my. Instagram handle is calamity. Yeah, calamity. Oh, well, uh, it, so it works. Thank you. Follow Rick. her on Instagram. <laughs> I liken it to the tortoise and the hare. I think. Oh, you're and- saying that breaking up is like a tortoise and a hare? Yeah. That's what you just did to me. <laughs> oh, really? Girls are like drinks. Oh, really? And let me guess that women are the hare because they're hairy and ugly, and men are the tortoise because they have big dicks. <laughs> Do tortoises have big dicks? Typically. They have a hundred years to grow I'm, one. I mean, I would hope so. I'm getting to a point that it is beneficial to everyone at this table, which I think slow and steady wins the race. I think feeling it and, and feeling the pain at first and taking your time with it, I think in the long run, that is better and healthier. And I still don't know if those people that got over me really fast, if they were okay. There's a decent chance that they were not, and I don't mean this in a nice way, interested in you to begin with. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like maybe like you were around and because you, you you need that validation so much, it was easy. Does that make sense? No, this is actually a very big theme in my life that I'm realizing that I have sought male validation, but it is meaningless because men have no standards. Now that is that is a, that is an okay way for you to digest that it is not um, sustainable to feel that way by by making fun of men. And I get that. I think men are pigs, and if God exists, she's a woman. However. Yeah. I have nothing against men. I think men and women are equal, equally bad and equally good. I think women are a little better. I think they're you're... smarter. They're stronger. What they could do with their bodies, what they have to put go through with the patriarchy. Listen, I'm a man just like the next guy, but like <laughs> I am so impressed with women all the time. I think women are well, so. That's powerful. weird that you're even going out of your way to say that. It's like a out weird, of my way? formal really? sort of like. Wait, is that why you were a girl in the chat rooms? Huh. <laughs> I never thought about that way, but there is a chance that because, you know, like chat rooms were a place where you could be social from away for the first time and that made it easier for me. I was trying to be like, you know how like when your kids wear superhero costumes, which I did like that was me being a superhero. My mom. Fake. <laughs> My mom's a superhero. Fake. <laughs> I ca- yeah. We can make jokes about it. That's fine. We don't have to get serious about it. But. <laughs> No, I yeah. Just, I just, I grew up with very strong women, and that's why it's, it's that's such why a you're off. attracted to models. Did you hear my joke? No. Right. Put on the fucking <laughs> headphones, you pig. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I'm agreeing to do this podcast because there are some. Su- I've been doing some fun little things. On Everybody agrees. No, but, but, I'm, but I'm short circuiting. Don't do that, racist. <laughs> My brain is still in Asia. Oh, you're right. I shouldn't put my finger. But I am Asian. I'm allowed to do the. I'm not. No, you know why you're not allowed to do it. 
Tell me. I don't know why. I think you should be allowed to do Micromanage it. Micromanage an Asian about being Asian. <laughs> no one here is not allowed to do... There's no rules. Everyone's allowed to do whatever they want here. Do you feel not allowed certain things? Yeah, I don't feel like I'm allowed to have my nuance picked up on because you don't wear headphones. We don't wear headphones. <laughs> Rick, 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 Rick. If you know what I'm saying, Wink. If you know what I'm saying. So your mom was your hero. You loved is, your mommy, so you is. were a mommy on the in the chat rooms. Oh, I was a mommy. Mommy made what would you, you a little say? too confident. Hey, hey, pretty boys, show me your fucking cock and I'll eat your ass. No, really, what would you say? Show me your cock, I'll eat your ass. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, I, I really don't remember the things I would say, but I do remember I learned A slash S, S -L. slash L. Cyber question mark. Wow, do you this want is a, a privilege cyber? I never got to partake in. It makes so much sense that you and I both did this in our parents' basement. It wasn't sexual. I, I, I mean, there might have been some subconscious thing that I didn't recognize, but I do remember the feeling of like, this doesn't feel sexual. I... I I know I'm lying, but I didn't even feel like I was doing something wrong. It really felt like... Intuitive? It just felt experimental. Like, what is this... First of all, experimental into the world of chat rooms, which was new at the time anyway. And then doing something that I could never do elsewhere. I don't remember why originally it was a woman. I don't know if it was always a woman. It also wasn't always like... like it's like it wasn't cyber necessarily. Age, sex, location, that's what that's the how you doing back in the day. It wasn't even trying to yeah. see... Did you put a... Pic could you put a picture up of yourself? No, you'd have to. You'd have to send it to them. And it was always send to receive S two R. So uh, you, would you have show to, me yours. I'll I show you mine. I feel like my growth is stunted because I never got to do that. I, I, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Uh, if most, you pretended you were a man in a chat room when you were ten, you would be way better off. I most think so. normal. Most people I know, I don't think did what we. I think there's a reason that. I, I don't want to throw this person under the bus, although I don't think they care. Um, but. Uh, a very good friend of mine did the same thing and also pretended he was a girl. Okay, that is weird to me because I, why did you guys pretend you were girls? Can we get anywhere with it? Yeah, I, th I well, I don't know. I, I, I never thought about this. I'm hypothesizing live on the take, what, what's this? I was going to say the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. What is it called? Trash Tuesday. Maybe it was easier to talk to a guy as a girl than it would be to talk to a girl as a guy. That makes sense. Probably more people in that room were guys. Now, that, that's not a conscious thing I remember, but like maybe I did both and I found that like there was more interaction from guys and it wasn't like I'm stroking my fucking dick. No. It was just like, oh, where are you from? It was it was relatively wholesome. It, but I it was still actually like dating. understand. It was sexual, but it wasn't physically sexual. Like the content for me was sexual, but I didn't have any sexual feelings at all. Right. At all? No. In fact, like well, you didn't go through puberty until you were thirty three, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So I for me it was phone sex lines. They right. were. You like, were the nine, if we called the nine hundred numbers, people like you and your family would well, answer. Well, they weren't necessarily sex lines. They were called party lines, and so yeah. you would hear someone's voice just on voice alone, and then you would say hello. Well, if you did not like the way they sound sounded, you would hit a number, and then it would go to the next person. It's kind of like hello. how BetterHelp you could switch your therapists at any time. Very quickly, yes. So, um, can we cut to BetterHelp? This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we are always growing and changing. Hello, look at me. I'm a different person every single day. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want. We don't know why we react the way we do until we talk through things with someone who's there to listen. And BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. I have to say that without therapy, I would not be able to be in a healthy relationship. I would not be able to have a healthy working relationship with you and Annie. And I just, I can't imagine, my life would be in the gutter without therapy. Same. And you guys, it's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Trash Tuesday today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Trash Tuesday. So I don't know about you, but organizing money is a challenge. 
And I'm definitely someone who will sign up for any subscription and forget about it. And that is why Rocket Money has been such an asset to my life because Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forget about, and chances are you're one of them. Like, for instance, I had this insect finder. So weird. <laughs> and I had this other anime app that I didn't know my niece had downloaded onto my phone. And I, I was have, paying like an obnoxious amount every year. I have so many streaming services. It's like, it's dark. <laughs> Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you. And for any you don't want to pay for anymore, just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all of your finances in one place and automatically categorize, categorize your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off, which is important. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to Rocket Money dot com slash trash tuesday that's rocketmoney.com slash trash tuesday rocketmoney.com slash trash tuesday um could we try this out could i call and you be who you're talking about and you be the voice i'm gonna call uh, oh, this party line hey, you guys do we'll this go back you recreate my party line experience fine but if i switch we're gonna go to you yeah and you and also give esther a little bit of notes like what should esther know like what types of voices give her some ideas of what be yourself be who you were back then. Well, no, but she's the part. She's at work. These girls have a certain. No, no, no. That's not how it worked. Huh. It wasn't a sex line. It was a, a phone number everyone could call to like meet people. Roulette. It was. It was like, like Omegle. Yeah, it was basically like a Tinder. Oh, but so we're on both. We're both. We're both trying to talk to somebody. It's not like I'm calling to talk to a. Pardon the joke. A hot girl, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Correct. Right, gotcha. All right. Let's try it. Will you do the ring sound effect, please? Okay. But do it like this. Bring, 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 bring. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Oh, sorry, I'm a little nervous. I don't. Hi. Hi. How old are you? How old are you? Thirty. Same. <laughs> um. Do you like TV? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Switch. <laughs> <laughs> it's like next. Do you remember that show? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's like chat roulette. Didn't you guys do that? What is that? You know what it is. I know what it is. Okay. It's like. like I'm sure if it's roulette, then there's a chat involved. Yeah, it's like a video and then you keep clicking it and it's like. Like you're matched up with random people, but a lot of times people would be like, they'd be out with their schwants and they'd be oh, like jerking yeah. off and it just became very unwholesome. Oh. Oh, a lot oh, of penises. Oh. You guys remember Hot or Is it Hot, hot or, or Not? not? Yeah. yeah. Hot or not com. I would never go near that. Why? You don't think people would find you beautiful? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to know. Yes, you do. And they won't. <laughs> so um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a site that just like matches you up like live. You get to talk to somebody. Ome it, it still exists. It's Omegle now. Shout out to Harry Mack, by the way, who's mm. a rapper who does it on Omegle all the time. And just random people will come up, hello, and he goes... He's unbelievable. Do you guys know Harry Mack? Mm -mm. He's he's unbelievable. It's actually probably what's one of my favorite podcasts I've done was him on mine. But he's so good, and he'll like ask somebody for three random words, and he'll freestyle, and it's like good. But then you see these people who are just people in their bedrooms reacting. There's something very cool about matching up with people. I just think people take advantage and become very dirty and inappropriate because they have the anonymity. You mean like what there. exactly what we did when we were children in chat rooms? Yeah, maybe, but but again, I I I wasn't I wasn't tr I wasn't, and I, it seemed like you weren't either. Like being dirty, what we were doing was weird, but like it was I was I was a kid and I was experimenting. Like, what is it like talking to guys and girls, and how do other guys talk to girls? I want to hear it, and it wasn't like me showing the penis or trying to get pictures of a penis or a vagina. Would, would you try it? It wasn't sexual. I definitely wanted to exchange photos, but I agree that it wasn't sexual, weirdly. Like, it was more experimenting in the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah, that was not my experience. In the party lines, I was always reaching for my toothbrush to stick into my... Really? I would get into... Hold yeah. on, I, I don't know what you were going to say. To stick into your mouth? To brush your teeth? <laughs> <laughs> it was brushing something. Wait, right. what you're age? Your, your teeth and your tongue? What age is this? Um... As a teenager. 
not as a 10 year old but by the time i was like 15 16 and you know this was I, I didn't have a computer so i and i would get super super horny and i would just want to hear someone's voice across the line and i would we would just talk dirty and i would find my toothbrush and Why use it to toothbrush? masturbate Why? that you was the get only a- thing like i i could i i had that was of a certain length how far do you need don't you only need to to go in a few inches only if you're right you're right thank you for that rick all of my nerves are right at the entrance if did, you go any deeper it's like no man's land i now feel I get shit why you like the type of guys you do go ahead did you get a, <laughs> to a finish line yeah that and i would young. feel extreme did you ever shame masturbate in the foot locker in the foot locker in a foot locker why did, a, is that what you did i i obviously you were you'd I, like to masturbate in the finish line i was just curious if <laughs> it to other places we'll be right back <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was a I was a really so really you would literally horny brush kid. your G spot. I would brush my G spot because it was the bristle end, and I would do things like I would find like the baseball dugout, and I would have sex with who I would anywhere I could find any weird cut of I would have sex do with. Do you now a boy. fantasize ever about masturbating with an electric toothbrush because of what toothbrushes mean to you? And follow up question: Do you think this is why you have TMJ? Um, I think that. Um, I don't use any sexual toys anymore because I don't like to keep upping the bar mm-hmm. for my, you know, to come. Instead of grinding. Like last night, last night, I swear to you guys, this is so embarrassing. It took me six seconds to come. I swear to you, it was, I was watching the show Beef and there was this really hot scene with Ali, Ali Wong and um, this other Asian guy, again, hot Asians. And I was like, oh fuck, it's like, I'm, I'm so jet lagged. What am I going to do to put myself to sleep? Do you have a clip? <laughs> what? Clip. Can we cut to a clip? <laughs> and so I swear to you, like I shocked myself. So I put my hand on my pussy and that was it. Really? And I was like, oh That's fuck. New York, man. You had my address. <laughs> I know we are so close. Oh, yeah, you didn't tell me where you were. <laughs> but isn't that incredible? I needed nothing. Well, but you're not desensitized by all of the machinery. Right, and I never want to be. Because you me use either. toothbrushes on your vagina, would you consider maybe you don't clench? But I don't you use your toothbrushes jaw? in my vagina anymore, Rick. I was doing a jaw kegel joke, and if you had on your <laughs> headphones, this wouldn't be a fucking problem, would it? You think? Yeah. Do you? Uh, I don't. Yeah. I think I a jaw kegel joke would be a problem. Oh, Headphones I thought you are meant not. You don't think. Uh, <sighs> it makes sense. Do you uh, do you jerk off? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me again. I, do you, did you floss your pussy? Did I floss my pussy? Yeah. Mm. No, because that would cut my clit. Oh, I just thought you like really small and thin penises. Go ahead. <laughs> What's this whole printer story that's going to be really worth it? Well, I just want to let you become aware of the condescension in your voice <laughs> because that makes me not want to tell the story oh. anymore. It make, I'm very Please vulnerable. Let me, me provide you a safe place, safe space, Rick. Look into, look into my eyes. I want to hear the printer story. It's more of an anecdote. So there I am. <laughs> <laughs> Doing my thing. I, I wanted pictures of them because... Carmen. I, uh, and uh, uh, Jenny McCarthy. Jenny McCarthy, Carmen Electra, and... Um, and uh, Pamela Anderson were the women. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, and Van Damme were the men. I was obsessed with muscles. Wait, um, Sly, Van Damme, and? Schwarzenegger was king. But I mean, Schwarzenegger, really? Stallone, Van Damme. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I thought, I, was, I really loved, obviously, as a kid, superheroes, and muscles were very cool, and, and like I wanted to be that, and um, I became obsessed with Arnold. I don't remember what, maybe T2, but then I went back to all the other stuff, barbarians now, and such. Isn't this interesting that you probably saw the muscly guys Here it comes. win? Go ahead, here's your big shot. Get the girls. So that's what you wanted to be. But meanwhile, me and Kalila are both examples of women here who are not into the big muscly right. guys. Well, What's inter- that about? Interesting, interesting because I'm so attracted to you <laughs> that what a bummer. However, um, if I weren't so allergic to flies and rats, <laughs> I would maybe give you a shot. I like muscles because muscles were cool. I still feel that way. I mean, you look at you look at athletes, like specifically cool basketball players, not athletes, just basketball players, and they just like the the builds. It's just I don't know. They're like superheroes. But I, for me, it's not the muscles. I like agility. 
then you'd love me. <laughs> Um, because I I like them I like I said you know I like them a little thick I like I like a belly but it's all about oh, whether like or not me. someone is able and coordinated because that to me translates. Have as you like, seen my my uh, character piece? I am phenomenal. Available now on YouTube. I have. I have. Did you see how agile I was? You are so so athletic. Yeah. Surprising. Can I ask a question? One sec. Go on. <laughs> Should people check it out? Should your fan base check it out? What should they do? Go to my channel at Rick Lesnar. Just YouTube. I Rick, am phenomenal. When I think about it, look at me. I'm undressing. Stop. That's inappropriate. I'm, you're right. You're in a relation now. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I was trying don't to. Don't do that. What's do. it like? Ah! Oh, sorry. Has he been here the whole time? Is he? Yeah. Last night he kept walking out of the room and he'd look at me and be like, "Nice to meet you, dude." <laughs> um, um, what uh, is it like if you're so agile? I'm so sorry, sir. One second. You were talking about how athletic I am. Yeah, and I liked um what was the title of your I am phenomenal. I am you are phenomenal, Rick. Thank you. Incredibly oh. phenomenal. And you know, we just had court. our 200th episode of the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. Oh, congratulations. Wow. And last time I was here, I didn't tell people about my podcast, so Oh. Um, they know. Wonderful. Well, what is it like though? Ah! <laughs> Jesus. I'm so sorry. Take off that What are you wearing? Take that off. Can we get some more sweat under our pits? Oh, never mind. I thought they were drying up. Go ahead. Okay. I want a progress report. Oh, they're not, not so bad. No. Not so bad. No. It's weird. Only this I mean, she shirt. hasn't done anything, but... Okay. You were going to ask about my agility. Yeah, you. so you know you're so agile, but yet you, it seems like you really need like a... Go ahead. Go ahead. You had spit in your mouth and you were <laughs> laughing too soon because you anticipated something being funny. Try it again. It seems like you really really you know how agile you are but you really need the external validation for it what's that about Why are you talking to me like i'm a puppy <laughs> it seems like you're really agile but you need to oh so, your little baby who's so agile oh oh you will you google search green tongue see what that means i think you should get that checked honestly do you go to doctors or are you afraid that they're gonna find everything <laughs> honestly honestly you're a monster I look at you and I'm, I'm, whenever I'm with you, I'm reminded I have a good time with you because of how funny I am and you enjoy it. <laughs> You're a monster. Look at me. You're a monster. Thank you. You're an you. insecure monster. You, that's, thank you for plugging my Instagram at Esther Monster. Oh, oh my, my God. God. What a calamity. I had no idea. That's <laughs> at Rick Glassman. <laughs> No, but seriously, and I, I want you to know that this is coming from- No, I understand what you're saying, and I can answer that, because there is truth to it. Okay. First of all, I'm not hiding behind it. There is a very strong level of irony. I come on, I plug BetterHelp, or mattresses, or my other videos, or my podcast. I do think it's fun to self-promote. However, why am I choosing to do that? Yes. I have, actually, what I'm saying has nothing to do with self-promotion. You're no, 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 I know what you're, here, let me, let me get this out. Or, or, you had your, oh, you had your <laughs> headphones on. Um, but why is it that I'm like, I'm choosing to promote these things? And I'm not going to get too much into it just because I've talked about it on podcasts. Again, it has nothing to do with you promoting. I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting it there. It was about you seeking validation from her calling you agile. I'm nothing there. to do with promoting. I don't know if you, maybe if you put your headphones on, you'd hear me. Okay. I'm getting there. I hear you. Great. Why is it that these are the things agile? Oh, sorry. Could we get her some? <laughs> what do you want? Shrimp? What do you normally eat? Could we get her some shrimp and some type of a milkshake? It doesn't matter which kind. I, I uh, started playing basketball late in high school, mm -hmm. and that's when I first started getting friends. When I first started getting confidence. When I first started feeling included. Ooh, this so, is sad. So there. Um, it's actually beautiful. I understand why it's sad. You have yet to be included. <laughs> I uh, no, that's not true. You have a podcast now that people now know you, right? You're single. How come you you stopped doing your solo podcast? I didn't. I still have it. It's called My Pleasure. Gotcha. People watch it. They listen. It's only audio. The audio number is good. They're pretty good. I'm happy. Yes. Oh, good. I uh, <laughs> I um didn't really have friends. Uh huh. And then I started playing basketball and just by the idea of us having a common goal, which is practicing at this time, a trying team. to win. Yeah, I was part of a team. Mm -hmm. And there is a camaraderie with teams. Um, I talked about this, I think, on Sickler's podcast recently, but I feel the same way about comedy. Like, even though we're all doing our own thing, especially when I we're first starting. I can't wait till you land the plane. How we, we're like this team, and like we're showing up at the comedy store, we had our improv troupe, like you feel included. Totally. So my A family, yeah. a, a cult, and like, and yeah and accepted and we're all different but like you want people around and you offer value I'm making you laugh that makes me, like shared I'm interests yes yes so basketball was the first time I really experienced that mm -hmm. so there is a part of me that though I'm aware of it it still exists where I have this identity that 
I'm good at basketball. I, I want people to know I'm ba- good at basketball. When I would go into gyms and people knew who I was, I wouldn't have to wait to play. They would. We got Glassman, and that always felt so good. One, I get to play, but two, like, am I cool? Like, do totally. people like me? And I feel the same way about dance. I grew up dancing, and I was I was quite good. Yeah. But I, if we're going where I think you're going, which I hope you are, because I don't know where else you could be going. So when so when Kalila says, "Oh, you're." Athletic. There is a part of me through jokes, but it's it's inspired and true. Where it's like I want people to know I'm not just some fucking Jewish goof who's always doing like oh 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 you know. Okay, so a, I'm cool, man. So there is part of me that's like selling cool. Yeah, but see, that's so you didn't answer. You just sort of confirmed what I said. Why do you need that external validation? For example, me. I know I'm an amazing dancer. That's why you keep bringing it up multiple times. No, no, no. I That's your fourth time. Don't, I don't, actually. You just did it. I don't need you, people. And you even said amazing dancer. I don't need people to tell me. I I feel it. I practice it. I know it. Yeah. But it seems like you really need to be told. No, it came up organically. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I have a blind spot. Okay. But I'm just curious. Do you really feel that way about yourself or do you need the validation from the external world? I don't world? need the validation from that. Okay. I never needed that, that. That there are out of the things that I could argue I would need validation from. That was that wouldn't be one of them. Mm. Because that, uh, what do I need validation for? Um, I. We I all need know. validation. It's okay. I don't but know none of us would be sitting here if we didn't. But I think that no. I've seen you move, and I have seen your your full agile self. Also, I'm a and great I dancer. And I think that um, I'm agile. You really are that good rick that i i don't think maybe you don't you need as much validation there because i think you know inherently i'm not how worried i'm not are. i yeah. really i really i, I also am like consciously trying to not sound offensive to let esther feel heard um <laughs> esther uh, but no I, I don't think so but it does make me feel good it does make me feel good like when other people on podcasts talk about me as a basketball player or even just someone says rick i heard you that there is a absolutely is part of me where because i go i'm glad a, you know it's a cool. separate part of you that you're not you know showing on like yes daily i think in the same way that you're like oh my god esther can dance yeah like it's and you are a very good dancer you are thank but you i feel the exact same way when people are like no you know she's a swimmer she does this yeah, she's cool. spent her whole life being in the water i'm like I have. I did. Totally. And I am so amazing in the water. I totally agree. And I think we all, there's no way we don't all love compliments. I get it. I am just personally on my own journey of learning about my validation needs. Mm-hmm. And thank you for sharing with everybody. Yes. And my, so, your own journey. and so what I'm learning is that I think people who are truly whole and confident and have self esteem and self worth. They don't really need compliments about things that they feel whole with. May I? You may. I think people that are fully whole or even on their way and, lot, and, and pretty enlightened don't feel the need to let other people know how incomplete they are. Now, I think that's a projection that you're doing because you're a miserable person. And I and mean I've, that in the worst way. And I've however, admitted that. And I'm, however, and I'm digging in for, for podcast reasons I here. also think there's something very important, and this has been my journey for about six years now, of understanding what you are both how you sell yourself, why you sell yourself, and what it is that you're selling. I love that. And accepting that thing. And there are things about me that they are what they are. Am I perfect? I think so. However, some people might think that's subjective. There are things about me that like, this is the thing I am. I will like when people think I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good athlete. It will make me feel good. If I were completely enlightened and I didn't need external validation, I wouldn't need that. But then I also wouldn't get the fun connection and that fun feeling. I am somebody who is has both insecurities and also very little if any shame about them this is the thing that i am truthfully i love who i am and it feels good to be it feels good to be accepted i mean like validation from an audience of people laughing at you and clapping like recognizing that is how you know what jokes work absolutely i actually and i have talked about this on podcast and so bad at that because i don't understand what people are thinking what do you mean I don't, when I do a show and I hear people laughing, I hear it. I don't know if they really think it's funny or what they think is funny. Oh, well, I can, I, I often, especially in the starting early days of my comedy, I never knew what was going to be funny. Well, you, nothing. (laughs) But is that what you mean or? 
What I'm saying is, and again, I'm, I'm feeling a little insecure about talking about this too much because I've talked about it on mine and others, but I am, I am not very in touch with how other people receive me. Even if they're laughing and doing this, whatever I think about me is what I'm, that's the only thing that I believe. Well, that's good. I th- it's great. It has gotten in my way a little bit because there, there is a social contract that you have where, for example... I bust your balls a lot. We've had conversations off podcasts about this where I've asked you and you've told me, this is fun, like we're having a good time. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. If people didn't know us, right, and you just took jump cuts of the things I say to you and not see your reaction and not the engagement, I could look mean. Mm-hmm. Now, I could be the same exact thing and you being turned off, now I'm mean. Or I could be this thing and you laughing and people really love it. I'm still the same person, but people are looking at the reaction shots. Mm-hmm. So it is important for me to see how I'm being received, and I do have a hard time that is true. understanding that. Yes, but I do think there's a superpower in the other version of it because a lot of the times you'll see people uh, dictate their content. Oh, I'm surprised you didn't tell me to. I have the worst posture. She has great posture. They'll, they'll dictate what they say. They'll they'll pander. And I think when you have the skill that you have so honed in on, which is knowing, only caring about what you think and feel, which is what I'm working on as a creative person, is like, what do I really feel? As opposed to, I don't want to do just because, oh, people like mm. this one thing. Like, I want to do what I want to do. So I do think that's a very valuable there's, skill. Uh, there's something that you said that it's a semantic, but I want to change. You said not caring about what other people think. I don't believe in that. That's not a real thing. Fuck what other people think. It doesn't matter what other people think. Um, it does matter what other people think. There's a difference between what I'm about to say and that. What other people think does matter. I just don't prioritize what they think over what I do. Does that make sense? Right. Like, it's kind of the same Well, here's thing. here's here's why it's different. And I'll, I'll give another analogy uh, with stand-up and fear. I used to be very... I still get scared. But I used to get very scared to go up on stage. And... There was a moment where I had this realization where I accepted, oh, that's what I do. I get scared. And instead of pretending I'm not scared and, you know, like wiping off my palms or psyching myself up and just like, instead of that, I have accepted that fear is not only okay, it's a guarantee. And I'm just not going to let it control my decisions. Totally. So what that means is, am I scared? No, fuck that. I don't care. No, absolutely I'm scared. But because I know that and I've accepted it, it doesn't need to be in the front of my mind and I could still be present while I I'm I use that exact same thing when I'm sad about something. Instead of saying, don't be sad. I'm so mad at myself for being sad. I'm like, I'm sad about this. That's what you were saying about grieving and going, feeling your feelings. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I feel that way about not, but the idea of not caring what other people think, I think that's that language gets in the way of how you see personal interactions because if I am trying to get myself to this confident place and I'm like I don't care what you think I'm not going to go in this conversation and not care what you think I do care and I'm interested but it's not going to control my 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 self identity my self esteem I think is... you are right that it's semantics because okay. it's kind of the same thing we're okay. talking about which is like when I post I posted a clip yesterday from our podcast saying that my sexual fantasy is to be a Jewish girl and a Nazi saves me to have sex with me and so many people are like this is fucked up you're wrong for posting this and I ha- like my attitude going in has to be like this is I set a, a sexual fantasy of mine. And I needed the whole world to know. And if you, and I don't care. That, but here's on top of that, because I, I read or I read Esther Perel's book. Yeah, which one? It's basically like your politics and your standing beliefs about life, all the things have nothing to do with your sexual kinks. They are fully separate because she has a lot of patients who go in who are basically what anyone would call a feminazi, but love, have rape kinks, have the most fucked up I kinks. bet you there's a through line to those too. There's, there's a suppression. But there is no through, maybe no, there's I'm a saying through like, line. Like, but like, like when, when, when guys or girls go to only guys or only girls school, and like they're not allowed to go out and drink, and they have to be home by yeah. ten. Like there's a, there's a, there's a, oh, there's a there's a suppression of things that they may have wanted to at least experiment with, like us in chat rooms. That they the pendulum swings the other way pretty far. I think that like a lot of priests who aren't allowed to do stuff ends right, up right. But I'm just saying, like as well, with with priesthood, it's different because there is a real suppression there. But for someone who is you know not suppressing suppressing their sexual anything, I would 
Well, Esther Perel basically says this, that like you, those compartments in your brain can live very, very separately mm-hmm. and one doesn't have anything to do with the other. And I would, I would agree with that because even me being some, somebody who's been sexually assaulted, like the, the weird, like you would think that my body would reject the experience or reject the thought of anything that would suggest. Yeah, you would think if you were sexually assaulted, you would like white men. <laughs> Correct. Right. But my kinks do not correlate with my trauma, like almost at all. And Subconsciously I think in no way. Sex, sex is just in the spirit of play. I can fully take myself to a place where I am just fully sexual that is not like there are no strings to the other parts of my brain or my morality or my value system at all i can i can confidently say that and i would also say that my that kink that i have is probably just because ray fines was super hot in schindler's list and he was a nazi and it's like if spielberg didn't want me to be attracted to nazis he should have cast someone uglier that's a good t-shirt thank you i'm not joking (laughs) It is. If Spielberg didn't want me to be attracted to Nazis, he would have cast somebody uglier. Yes. I he would have cast me. <laughs> Wait, that wasn't Liam Neeson? No, Liam Neeson was Oscar Schindler. Ray Fiennes was the evil oh, Spoiler guy. alert. Right, right, right. Not as funny as I remember. I rewatched it. I think Dumb and Dumber is funnier. <laughs> God. Um, but I do like what you say. I, I think that you should lead with that kind of fearless. Um, I've just, yeah, I've just decided, and I wonder if you relate to this. I'm very curious, actually, because you seem like I can't tell which where you will land on this. But like, I can't do this thing that I've signed up to do if I'm not going to be so open and free mm. and like freedom to upset people freedom to express myself honestly like that's what i need for this to work otherwise i've done it the other way for years where i'm hiding and holding back it's that doesn't help me and it's not artistically or creatively fulfilling Mm -hmm. now does that mean i don't give a fuck what other people think a little me i not not so crudely yeah well because you're, you're choosing to share to these people that you don't care what they think so that that's not real well, I'm because you wouldn't be sharing it for that. So it's what I guess it is the semantics of what you said. I'm prioritizing what yeah. I think, I, and and those semantics are relevant. I we talked about this on one of the one of the the um, uh, tiger bellies that I did with you guys, but I I really believe that the language we use to ourselves changes the way we see the world. I and, agree, and and that idea. Of, and the example I, I I think I gave there was instead of I have to do something, I get to do something. Ugh, I have to come to New York and do this podcast today. I get to do this. Totally. Like this idea of like certain language literally instills gratitude and excitement and positivity. And not, I think caring what people think is such an important good thing, at least for them to be understood, e- even if you don't agree with them. You know, that's a really good point you're making because I've kind of like started thinking about the types of people who deem themselves truth tellers and brutally honest. And I'm like, I think that those are the most cruel people on earth because I think they enjoy being honest as much as they enjoy being brutal Mm. and cruel. And, and if, if you're somebody that I love and care about, I'm going to tell a few lies. I'm going to mince my words. I'm going to say right. certain things depending on how you're appearing in front Let's of me see, and your Esther mood. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm not going to lie about big things, right? Uh-huh. But like people who just are just so like like piercing all the fucking time. I'm like, "No, do you not care about like the person's like if like if my sister is having a bad day, like I'm going to dance around mm-hmm. like her sensitivities that day because I care about her and I don't want to make it worse. And if that involves like, you know, a white liar, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in like brutal honesty at all because I think it's just that it's brutal. I don't believe it's as binary as that. And I have a strong take on what you're saying. But before I do, um, would you like to uh, use the bathroom or something? I'm okay for now. Thank you. you. Uh, Do you need the bathroom? Yeah. Are you projecting? Yes. (laughs) Poopoos. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm okay. Um, so uh, no, go poop. Really, I'm okay. I was really uh, because I was talking, and then you were talking, and then I was gonna go back, and I just wanted to include one more time, <laughs> Esther, <laughs> Ethel, um, Ethel. Um, so I do think that people um, use honesty sometimes, and really believe this that well, I'm being honest. So 
It's almost mm. like I'm allowed to do it. I really think they believe it. For whatever reason, I don't think that matters. They believe it. I think there is so much value in always being honest. Now, always, I don't mean you're a robot. Yes, people lie. There's a spectrum of it. And what makes a lie? But like, but if there's a spectrum of lie, there's also a spectrum of honesty then, right? But oh, I'm, I'm by spectrum of lie, I mean like you said, lying about big things or little things, things that don't really matter or like things that are not necessarily lies. Like if I could tell that you don't want to eat now and I'm a little hungry and you ask, you hungry? I'm like, no, nah, I'm okay because I know that you want to keep, like there are right. things, shorthand. But there are also ways of being honest tactfully both in the way you do it and the timing of it. For example, if your sister's in a bad mood and she says, how was my, how did my dress look tonight? You don't have to say it was the most beautiful dress in the world. You could say, you are so beautiful and uh, you know whatever, like you're so beautiful, I had such a great time, blah, 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 blah. And then later on, if you think it offers her value to not wear that thing again, if you think you, you could bring it up at a time where she could hear it. I, you confused? I, I I don't have a strong point of view yet, but in this example, I'm like, is it a little gaslighty though? To if that's she why, knows she feels looks bad, and you're saying you saying, look great. No, that's what I'm saying. The tact is so. But if it, she if she says, how does this? Well, check this out. If you don't like my outfit, okay, I don't. Right. So and, good example. Thank you. And I say, how's my outfit? And you could tell that I need. I'm feeling a little something where I need a little reassurance, right? Okay. You I could say, say, Rick, you look re without talking about my outfit. You can say, Rick, you look you look handsome today. Your posture is good. But you, you were funny. But you asked about your outfit. That's what I'm saying. There's a there's ta there's a political way around it. But then if you're doing if we're doing this, I'm gonna and I'm you. I'm gonna be like, oh, well, I asked about my outfit. All right, let's do it. Okay. And I'm I value honesty very 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 much because I need it. I need it because I didn't always get it and I didn't know. I don't know when people are lying. I don't know if they even know when they're lying. I value it and I do look at information above my ego where I can. If it triggers me, it triggers me. But like, I want the information. So doing that, I do it the other way. And there are jokes and they're silly. And let's do a real example of it. If I see that you need some validation, which I know you don't, <laughs> then here's how it would go. So go ahead and ask me the question you have to ask me. Um, but let but to, to read real, because I'm going to be real. Okay. So you could be present. It doesn't have to be a scene. Just ask me now. Okay. Do you... Uh do you think that I'm attractive? Before I answer that, Great one, good one, good I want to know what your intention, like are you being playful or? No, I'm like, do, do you think like if Dave dumped me that like I could get someone good? No. Okay. So you didn't do the thing? I did the thing and I made a point and I made a strong one. You, <laughs> you laugh at that stuff all the time, but you were, you were looking for something else. I know with you, if you were really asking me something, the way I would do it were to be a little bit fighty and a little playful to make sure that our conversations were authentic. Because otherwise, tell me if, what you think of this. Ask me the question again. Do you think I'm attractive? You're beautiful. <laughs> do you believe me? No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. Yeah, I think we're dancing around this in a way. It, there was a little yeah. bit of play that didn't work. And I, that's... I'll take full blame. Look, I just think, I guess the point I was making was this. You could always be honest. Um, you can. Yeah, but I, I, I think that there are people as of late who are like. I know what you're saying. I'm a truth teller. That, those are people that think, hey, it ain't mean if it's true. Yeah. No, fuck you. It's, it's, yes, it is. It's, your your it, intention isn't to be kind. Your intention is to add, to prove how honest you are. And that's selfish. They're getting off on it. They're yes. getting off on knowing that and feeling smarter and holier than thou and, and better also, than you. What's right, and I'm also in the... I am basically people who have to announce their asset. Like I always say, like, beware of declarations. You do say if that If you lot. have to announce your asset, there's probably something that isn't honest Can about Can you give that. an example of what that is? Um, I'm a great dancer. <laughs> like, um, I said it's amazing. like, I guess I just have a really bad experience with one of my... Um, uh, younger relationships in my 20s where the guy was always like had to announce like i i'm not this or i'm not this i am this and i'm like well just oh, yeah. be that show me that because then it was like ooh, like and, and later i found out he was not any of those things well that's the casting thing that's the i i i have a narrative of what i i, I want to be seen a certain way 
Yeah. That's what people and and and. But now people are saying, well, like there, I even the word truth teller is very like it. it I don't it sends a chill down my spine, Ugh. and I'm like, yeah, because defining it. Is yeah, I'm thing? like, oh, you're yeah. that, and I'm not that. Like, shut the fuck up. Right. Like you have to, and so now. Now you are like the gospel because you announce yourself as a truth teller because what like maybe I'm somebody who who is you know not as like like I said like I do dance around people's like feelings a this little is bit. really good at dancing around people's feelings. Show us. But I know what you're saying. If I I'm like hey like how do I look and you're like honestly Kalila I think you could put on something better that I do appreciate yeah, yeah. you want to know if you have a yes, book in your nose you look better when your hair is covering your face you look you want somebody to tell you you have something of in your course. teeth but you don't have them do it like oh oh like oh you know you do it like hey Kalila you have a booger in your nose and I think it's a beautiful booger but you might want to get rid of it <laughs> I will say that when I was in my early 20s, I had a friend once who was like, I'm a good person. And I remember walking away from that being like confused because I was like, I've never heard someone say to me that they're a good person. Dude. And then I was like, I feel like that feels weird. It's so weird. I talk about this on stage. I, the, I, the, this is a microcosm for other things, but chivalry and what you're supposed to do on dates or early dating. The idea of getting the car door for a girl. If we're coming from the passenger side, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get the door. We're right here, whatever. But if we're coming from the driver's side, the idea that of me going around the car with you to open the door for you feels so manipulative because mm -hmm. it's this is me trying to show you I'm a good guy, which by the way I am, and this isn't the reason, and I don't want to get this door. If you told me it makes me feel good to get the door, sure, I'll do it. But for me to pretend that this is what I do. I actually love point. that. I, I yeah. agree with that. Your goodness does not hinge on whether or not good you're going to um, you know, swing the door hinges open. Yeah. Is that the pun? Yes. But okay. that's the thing. Like, there are things you're supposed to do. And the idea of what you're supposed to do, supposed to, whatever whatever the thing might be, is, it's a pleasure to meet you, you know, when you meet the girl's father. You know, how are you, my, my nine? You is know, and is have that, that how you do it? No. And how do you do it? Um, oh, I'm daddy. You could be the, okay. this is my daughter you're dating. Sure. Hi. Hi. This is my daughter. Do you think this is a make, I'm not going to say it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, sir, uh, sir, uh, Hey, nice to meet you. Hey, Rick. Uh, Pays I... for horses, old man. <laughs> wow. Wow. Sorry, Dad. Does your daughter... He's does, autistic. Does she, does she, He's autistic? Yeah. Does, does, does That's a dick you suck? Hey, Daddy. Does your daughter have health insurance? <laughs> Daddy. Does your daughter have health insurance? <laughs> she will. Well, let me know when she does, because I have a feeling I might split her open. <laughs> Ew. We... We... I have... Okay. Pro right and go, con goes into you. to what you Wait. said, I agree. It's so much better, and this is the type of people that we are. Is like be in the moment. Don't do something that you're supposed to do because it shows that you're good. Like just be yourself, be organic in the moment. But counterpoint to that, there might be some people that don't have the self confidence to like know how to be in the moment, and so they only know how to follow a certain rule book. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're a crazy bad person. Absolutely, agree. totally. Okay, I just wanted to put that out there. But I'm, oh, I'm like I'm a you. perfect example of that I'm in I'm a very in retrospect kind of girl because I when I'm nervous I cannot be in the moment like I am just surviving the moment mm. I'm very clear um an hour after or maybe when my you know I have my faculties about me again but if I'm just like I'll always there's usually that's why I'm a an apology person. It's always you're going to get a text later, and it's going to be a very clear retro, you know, in retrospect text. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't behave and my most authentic self. You kind of in default the to a playbook that right. is more comfortable because it's a survival playbook. Yes. but there are ways uh, that there isn't anybody who is going to be able to change or fix that if it's even something that's to be fixed but there are ways and there are types of energies and communication to where when if we're talking and you are that way and i recognize that either by just getting to know you or you at least having the skill set of being able to say hey i just want to let you know i'm a little triggered and i'm a little out of it right now or whatever to know that things are different where you could just like bored <laughs> really should we stop <laughs> <laughs> Where you could be like you could be like what's going on and get you get someone back to present. What what are you so nervous about? You know, oh, the, you, that you, makes me nervous. What, Being what? like even saying, "Oh, 
what are you so nervous about? <laughs> I didn't mean to so judgmental. Scary. I'm sorry. But Wait, I have to explain myself now. I just can we just get through this? I'm just surviving, yeah. and I'm here, and we'll figure it out yeah, as we fine. go. And I'll explain all my weird little over blinking later. Yeah, that's fine. I was just, um, absolutely. Do you want to watch Shark Tank? <laughs> Do I want to watch Shark Tank? Shark Tank, yeah. Together? Are you, are you guys on a date right now? Well, I'm saying like, yeah, I would say. Am I, would, I still her dad? Do you, are we doing this? <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> I, I don't know why I keep looking at you and wanting to undress, and I don't think it's a sexual thing. I, I, I got to tell Please you Please so- tell me it's not. <laughs> Please, I need that to not be sexual. Only for you. <laughs> Is there something wrong with your jaw? No. Do you have a jaw? What's going on with that egg? Eggster, we should call you. Easter eggster. Um, are you, you're doing all right financially, right? <laughs> are you going to get your teeth fixed? What's going on? <laughs> I had to put my sunglasses back on. Look at these um, I think we are. It looks like you have a big tooth. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, I know somebody I with a my big tooth. tooth. I, good. And you should. Go ahead. Um, Terminator. There, um, there is uh, my friend's sister um, has so you're talking about had, you. had a very, very big gap in her tooth. And instead of putting... Um, instead of getting braces, the gap was big enough. They put in a fake and tooth. She put a. She opted. I don't know if it's in a comedic way or just out of like pure. Um, I think function. She put just one tooth in the middle of her gap, and I think it's fucking both ge- genius and hilarious because it's like, oh, she has a front chomper now. It just looks a little strange. Right. But so I think. Really, the color of your tongue and the, the way it splits, uh-huh. it looks like you're both dehydrated and probably an idiot. Mm-mm. That's just a geographical tongue. Really? I'm here to defend you, Esther. Look at her tongue. Look closely at that tongue. It's just that's, geographical. That's a healthy tongue? Yeah. We all have different types. Of, is yours too? I scraped this morning. Let me see yours. I don't show. I don't only show my tongue on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are out of time, which is just too bad. I do advise that you girls put on headphones for your next podcast. Why? I, it's all, you're, It's off. What are you talking about? You would understand if you put your headphones on. Can you on. explain it? Yeah, there are certain times where where we talk over each other, and I'll be the first to say it. I do it all the time, and um, you know, I talk a lot. But with the headphone, and you don't have to stop talking, but but you're missing stuff. You're, there's things you're not hearing while you're talking, and not that those things aren't necessarily important, but it's information that you're missing, and it can make you. And I and again, I do mean this in a shitty way. It will make you quicker, and mm-hmm. I think you could use that. Thank you. Yeah, I will. I will. I actually don't think I missed anything, but I'm open to. I'm open to being wrong. Mm. You were so funny last night. Thank you. Yeah, Rick, we've really missed you. Yeah. Yeah. Me personally, I I really really I I realize I don't like I don't realize how much I miss you until I see you again. Mm. What is it that m- reminds you? Seeing you. Seeing you, yeah. Just, just seeing me. It's not like an energy. It's just like, oh, right, that guy. I enjoy this guy's company. Yeah, but yeah, you I really relate. are, um, yeah. Like when I'm away from you, I definitely don't want to be seeing you. I fe- Honestly, I really, I, I said it to my girlfriend. I said, I don't really think that Esther is my arch nemesis. <laughs> uh, I do think she's shaped like an arch nemesis. <laughs> However, like she, you know, she's a girl that I know that I no longer trust because I find her to be selfish and very involved with money. However, <laughs> when I see her, uh, the, the, I, pro, un- by the way, projecting. <laughs> I, I'm not going to get into w- the don't. facts, but not projecting. <laughs> um, I see you, and I am reminded, and it's not that I don't believe it, but I am reminded, like I have. It's almost always a good time. Yeah, I almost always. Because no matter how disgusting you are or how quick-witted I am, we find a way for me to be funny and you to laugh at it. <laughs> and I just think that's really important for my self-worth. Mm-hmm. No, but jokes aside, I saw you. I hadn't seen you in however long. The music, I just know you're down. We did the spin. We did the thing. You're, you're into it. I'm into it. It's very easy. Yes. So I don't forget with you. I always enjoy your company. So it's, Thank you know, you, but Rick. this, this. Right. <laughs> It's like when it works. It works. It it really works. It does. And this works. And I'm glad that we were able to do this. Thank you. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, the first appearance I had, I was it was a different energy from all of us, and it, it was, was highly sexual. We, she, we were. I mean, s- well, this time you're just talking about what kind of dicks you guys like, and I no, this we wasn't. This this was almost zero sexual. Yeah. Great. But the, to me, it wasn't the sexual energy that was different. That Really? Because we were like in we, lingerie, Rick. It's so funny that you even remember. I have no memory of what happened. I remember the, I remember the, it was more, com- that and that was more common what, what this is. This is, I think we're all in a new space. None of us have pooped. You pooped a lot or not enough? 
not enough. Right. Not, I haven't pooped since I think the last Trash Tuesday. So <laughs> this was lower, but it was it was nice. But uh, it was nice. But I think I think next time we should all poop before the pod. That's fine. Well, you wanted to do it at 11 a.m. So, which thank you for. I have a day. I have a day. Totally. I'm just saying I normally don't like to because I need to poop before too. I understand. So. Free plug, by the way. Um, part of our day, we did Color Me Mine and we didn't finish. So we're going to go and finish. That's adorable. Yeah. Mine's All right. Really good. Well, Wait, people, couples do that? That is I love so that. sweet. But the new couple, don't. new couples do that. I love doing things like that. No, I love it too. So why don't Can you Can I it? come with? Yeah. Do you, do you want to meet us there? I can't today, but do you want me to come back? Yeah, I'll stay longer. When do you want to go? You want you want to go, go to Color Me Mine with 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 me and my girl? I would love to. Probably in L, when she's in L.A., let's all go. Would you like to come? Not today. I meant in L.A. Oh yeah, there's one right by me. Do you think we could get them to sponsor the episode and we could film it there? <gasps> I don't know, but it's interesting that you're interested in getting a sponsor. It seems like you projected something earlier a few moments ago about me. Oh, I won't argue. I can see you're being really defensive about that, and that matters to you. No, yeah, this is part of the business where you try to film in full I places. I love that about you, you being about your bag. Thank it's you. It's my favorite thing about you. That's why her and I can go on and on and yeah. on about just, you know, mogul ideas. Yeah. Rick, thank you so much. I had such a good time. I loved it. Thank you, you Ricky. You are so, so he- awesome. Here today. And, um, <laughs> Mr. Schwarzenegger, I want to say... Um, Thank you for having me. We could call this episode, um, instead of part two, T2, and have the thumbnail be you That's and right. to put a red light in your glasses. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, if there's anything I was here to plug, it would be Color Me Mine. <laughs> and um, Esther. And thank you again. <laughs> oh. All right. Oh, don't you, do, do you normally close on like a big laugh? Esther, no. do, do your uh, half Jewish, half... Do Regular. Your, yeah, do that joke. We'll see you guys next week with a brand new episode. And uh, that's all for now. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Rick. For all the times, times you stood, stood by me. For, for all, all the truths that, that you let me see. For, for all the joy you brought to my life. For all the wrong that you made right. For every dream you made me see. For all the dreams of in me, you're everything I am because you love me. Title card.